sleep from 9 to 8 every work day No fun at night, gotta hit the hay But on Friday, now you've worked all week long It's time to get out and say what's up Hong Kong Welcome to What's Up Hong Kong, the show where we tell you what's going on in Hong Kong this week and meet some of Hong Kong's most interesting people. I'm coming to you from a weird place mentally this week, folks. For this first time in my life, I have ever been crippled. I broke my foot in a dodgeball game, if you can believe that. I'm going to remain positive, though. That's right, people. I'm not handicapped for the next six weeks. I'm handicapable. It's February 26, and our guest today is stand-up comedian Sean Hebert a man who is involved in a variety of activities here in Hong Kong and was nice enough to stop by today to tell us a bit about them. How are you, Sean? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, no, it's great to have you here. Let's learn more about our guest. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Sean. Sure. Uh, nice intro, by the way. Nice, uh, <laughs> he is not lying. This foot does not look good. Yeah. This looks terrible. Don't. I wouldn't be embarrassed, though, about a dodgeball injury, to be honest. Right. I had a friend. It's a true story. Uh, separated his shoulder playing the board game risk so playing the board game risk. well i could see yeah. where that where i would have that problem before yeah. because i i used to play risk where every time you take over a continent everyone shotgun to beer so it was right. uh, it, you could it, that could that lead to something cool. like if it was like if we'd use like badass uh, frat man rules or whatever that would have been cool but like this was just a normal friendly sober game of risk that like devolved into like a <laughs> hospital visit so like dodgeball at least like you could probably tell a chick that and like that right. would be out of the realm of cool, you know. <laughs> well, they I, I even saw the video online. I just it doesn't even even make any sense. I my foot just collapsed for no reason. So, time for some calcium supplements. Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um I uh I'm from Canada. I'm not I'm not sure what uh in the way of a bio I can provide. I uh I've lived in Hong Kong for less than a year, but I spend uh I work for Hong Kong Magazine and I do the arts and film section. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the day job, and by night I moonlight as a comedian. Excellent. So. And uh, what do you love about Hong Kong? You haven't been here that long, but are you infatuated with the city yet? I love uh, when the weather isn't as <laughs> disgust so disgustingly hot that I have to have a change of clothes yeah. for walking to work, walking home from work. I, I love... I love being close to the ocean. I didn't, I didn't grow up near the ocean, so that's sort of a new experience for me, like being able to go to the islands. It's accessible. Sure. I like uh, – it's busy, you know. I like that it's a city that doesn't sleep. There's always something to do. There's something uh, around. Uh, there's things I dislike about Hong Kong, but there's a <laughs> lot to love about Hong Kong. So I think uh, I've embraced the city. I'd never visited before I actually moved here, so it was sort of a, a shot in the dark, roll the dice. Oh, so wow. Pleasant surprise. Yeah, definitely. So that's good. You didn't do any study abroad anywhere during your studies? Uh, no. No, I kept it local. Uh, I've, I'd lived in some other spots around the world. I'd, I'd lived in Asia before. I was living in uh, just south of Seoul in South Korea for okay. a while. And uh, Different culture here. Yeah, sure. yeah. Koreans have got their own thing going on over there. They, uh, they're they pretty intense with the culture. They're keeping it traditional. They're keeping it real. They like to drink. Uh, they they love that language they got going over there. Definitely, no, definitely, uh, I'm being a little facetious. A different experience entirely if you're, uh, if, if you speak English primarily. Uh, mm -hmm. And so coming here, it's a little easier to do things like stand-up comedy, do things like journalism. So that's the nice East-West combo right. of Hong Kong. That's Love appealing that. for sure. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, with respects to your comedy career, who are your comedic influences? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about influence. I can tell you just who I like. Sure. Um, I, I, when I was growing up, I always liked uh, black comics. Like uh, Dave Chappelle was Oh yeah. sort of, you know, when I was in like high school, that was uh, – like you weren't cool if you didn't show up at school, like knowing like what went down on Chappelle's show. Sure. Uh, and then the, the week specials, before, killing them softly. Killing them softly. Uh, <laughs> later, I mean, it's a shame, really, because if you become addicted to stand-up comedy, you become addicted to like the the stage present and the persona of that comedian, right? So, uh, Chappelle like famously stopped really performing, like stopped making specials, and it's like a death. Like it's like a you know, attending a funeral of a family member right. because it's to the point where you, you come to adore that person's perspective on the world. Uh, you go through withdrawal. You do like to the drug. extent, if somebody were to say to me, they're like, hey man, did you hear Chappelle has just released a new, I would, I would be out the door before you finish the sentence. I would be like, <laughs> fuck work today. It's, it's done. I'm out. I'm, I'm going to go home, download it. Like, 
you know, whatever, <laughs> crack a beer. Like, there, I think there's a there's an element of stand-up comedy where you come to feel like you know the comedian. And I always felt like, um, when I was growing up anyways, the uh, comedians like Jerry Seinfeld or uh, guys like Bob Newhart, that was the first stand-up tape I ever had, like oh, going wow. further back. It was, uh, they were a lot more like joke structured and I felt like you couldn't really get to know them as well as like in those early 90s, like those deaf comedy jam guys. Like the black comics were really all about expressing their experience, right? Sure. Like who they were, like where they came from, what it was like to be them in different situations. And so it was easier for you to be like, I get Chris Rock. Like I know who this guy is, right? Then maybe if you just say, okay, like, uh, right. Mitch Hedberg, like I feel like I know him. Do I really? No. I, I feel yeah, like right. he's exactly. great, but I don't know him. Like I, he might be totally different if you hung out. Right. You feel like even if they tell a joke about their life, it might not even be true. You just can't tell. Right. Exactly. But so with, I, I, I was yeah. always influenced by guys that were a little more, uh, like revelatory, like maybe a little more like autobiographical when they're on stage. Sure. Uh, Patrice O'Neill uh, is a guy. He he passed away last year, but. If you ever, he's getting a lot of heat YouTube. right now. I've noticed. Yeah, well, he was like the ultimate comics comic, right? So, like any guy that ever met him, any guy that ever worked with him, they would say he was the best, right? Like this guy, he had such a natural ability on stage to be almost conversational to a fault. Like it would feel like like he would sit. He would famously you you never see it in specials, but mm -hmm. if you if nobody was re, was rolling the tape, he would sit. So he wasn't even standing up while doing stand up comedy because he was just sort of shooting the shit with the audience. And it was so comfortable. It was like having that buddy of yours that's super funny. And we all have a friend that like oh, yeah. every word that comes out of their mouth is is hilarious. And any comedian, the greatest compliment you could get is that somebody says, seeing you on stage, I feel like I know you. I feel like it, w it was like hanging out. And so. Stalker. Uh, ex <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it, Patrice O'Neill, I think he's like closest I've ever seen to, yeah. to that. He's, he's, your, he's your funny buddy that you know and you're hanging out with. I think he just released a posthumous album or his family did. He did. It's called Elephant in the Room. I don't uh, commend people who uh, download things illegally, uh, although I download everything illegally. Uh, but if you get a chance <laughs> to see it or download it, please, Elephant in the Room, it's sweet. It's a great album. All right, cool. Good recommendation. And uh, so you are the host of many open mic events here in Hong Kong now, uh, where comedians who are just starting out come to develop their chops. Tell us a bit about what goes on there. Yeah, uh, there's a couple open mics that run every week. Um, the Tuesday night at Takeout Comedy up on Elgin Street in Soho, uh, they run that every week. Uh, I don't host that one. Uh, right. Uh, Diane Huntoon hosts that. Uh, Diane's since, great. Yeah, since I have been here, she hosts uh, pretty well every week. I know she takes some weeks off. Uh, recently, a guy named Nick Oliver, I think, hosted one of those Tuesday nights. Okay. And I think uh, it might switch up a little bit more in the future. Um, but uh, there's also Wednesday nights at the Brew House, and I was there last night. And uh, those shows are awesome because I think they're they're fun, right? Like they're it's good to get the crowd in to get them to understand that people are going up and trying new new stuff. And it's really good to have people coming in that you've never seen before, that other people in the comedy community haven't been exposed to. Because uh, people come up and they have a totally different style. And I think that's important. It's the growing comedy scene here. And uh, uh, there's a guy named Cliff. Actually, he, just the first time I ever saw him was a couple months ago. And he went up and just started telling jokes. And it was the delivery was like not like anybody else I'd seen in Hong Kong. And to me, it was like totally refreshing. It was, it was <laughs> awesome to see just a different style, a different character on stage. Uh, so the open mics are good for that sometimes. Had, had he done it before or is he just I fresh off the street? That's I, no, I think he'd, per, I think he'd performed before. Uh, I think he's from, he's from the States. He'd performed before. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure how often or how much, mm -hmm. but he was there last night and I know he's getting more exposure. He's going to start doing some of the shows, but oh, cool. uh, you never know, right? It's like any given night, somebody can walk in and just kill right. at an open mic. And so th there's a level of kind of intense suspense. Sure. It's fun. You never know. And being the hub that Hong Kong is, I'm sure that there are a lot of people in the city who have dabbled in stand-up before and maybe have hit some over other open, open mics in their home country, and then they come here and say, hey, why not just on a, on a, for a laugh? Yeah, go yeah, on sure. In. <laughs> yeah, you never know who's going to come up, and, and people will say, oh, yeah, I, I, I do stand-up in Beijing, or I do stand-up overseas, and then you... The cool thing about comedy is, like, you can walk in and you can give your business card and say, yeah, I'm a stand-up comedian, right? But, like, it's like, oh, yeah, well... There's the microphone. So it's <laughs> one of these it. things. It's like a pretty easy 
feedback loop for everyone to see like, okay, well, we can all say we're, we're stand-up comedians, but as soon as we're up there, you're going to see what that person's chops are, their experiences, or what their style is, and so it's cool. You want to walk around town and say you're a stand-up comedian? Like, <laughs> we'll see you on Tuesday and Wednesday. It's perfect, right? It's, it's, <laughs> it's a great activity for, for that. It's, a, it's the perfect uh, profession or, or hobby for somebody who wants to go up and prove themselves, I think. Great. And uh, how many people at Open Mic's bomb? Anybody just get up there and die, or is the crowd pretty cool? Um, yeah, no, but people bomb all the time. <laughs> I think we everyone everyone bombs, man. Everyone, you have to bomb. That's important. I think going up and like the best is telling a joke where you're like, you're sure you're like, this is good. Like this, <laughs> this, is, this is brilliant. I wrote this on the MTR. This is gonna this is gonna go killer. Get up there. You say a joke that you weren't sure about, it kills, and you're like, what? That, that was okay? And then you're like, oh, perfect. I'm going to butter them up with this gem, and then it's crickets. Like, the room just sits, and everyone's looking up at you, and then you're like, ha, ha, you hate me. You despise <laughs> me for that. And, like, that's, the, that's, I think, why it's important to bomb, because there is no test other than putting something out to the audience. It's not like... You know, it's not like doing a play or something like that where you can stand in front of the mirror and you can sort of progress in your performance. In comedy, there's only so uh, so much you can stand in front of a mirror, do it in front of one person or something before you mm -hmm. gotta grab a mic, do it, and that's the test, right? That's that's where you're gonna figure out is this good or is this complete crap that should never <laughs> go into someone's ear hole ever again out of your mouth. So are you uh, approaching the the guys that bomb and giving them some tips after the show, or are you just trying to avoid the hell out of them? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I don't know. I uh, I don't think that you should necessarily ever give someone advice unless they've solicited advice. Sure. I think that's that's like yeah, in life, in point. life in general. Like if you're a, if you're that dick that walks around being like, hey, you know what you're doing wrong? Like, no, you don't need to. Do Somebody parallel parks like a complete asshole. You don't need to go tell them how to. That's the a fast track where I come from to getting your face punched in. <laughs> so now if somebody goes up and they they didn't do well, but they like what you did, they might come up and, and ask you. Um, happens from time to time, but I'm probably not the best guy to ask. Uh, <laughs> no, I would never advise somebody on how to do it better unless you know they're like, all right, cool. Let's you know tell me something about when you were going up and having nobody laugh at all. Okay. And uh, what tips would you give to new stand-ups to get over the hump if they're having some trouble and then uh, they they're tr they're really do want to make it? They, they want to uh, achieve some success. Uh, well, as someone who has not made anything, <laughs> um, well, I mean, I'm not the best guy to ask, but I would... You're now at Takeout Comedy doing the... You're even in the All-Star tr show. True, right? true, true. Um, true. I, I would say d just do it every time. Like, I really... Uh, it's it's like having an essay due on Friday night and you like fuck around for like Monday to Wednesday and then you've got like that Thursday morning you're like oh crap like this is gonna be a terrible day like there's something I have to do today if you if you force yourself with a deadline if you force yourself with a commitment uh, things get done and you'd be surprised how much your brain sort of flips around on you to say well you better think of something you better be ready you better put yourself in that headspace and I think it's uh, stand up is one of those things. Uh, if you can get out of it, you will. There's a lot of, you know, if you if you can avoid stepping into the club, sometimes you're like, no, nah, I feel, is, what is that, a stomach tick? No, nah, I felt something. No, nah, I shouldn't do it tonight, right? And so if you just say, you know what, I'm going to do it every single week for three months. If it doesn't go cool, then I won't do it again. Then you're going to be so much better off than somebody that says, I'll try it once. If I like it, I go back. Because eventually if you run that second track, First time's going to be awesome, usually is. Second time's going to be terrible. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. May not ever come back the third time. And so it's better to say, no, I'm going to try to see it through the ups and downs and try to give it like a longer, uh, a longer period of time to see like a larger sample size of like what I have on stage. And, and you probably will end up liking it, I think, after a few months. Okay, great. Good tips. And can you describe your process for developing new material? Um, uh, some, uh, <laughs> sometimes I think if, uh, if you see something funny and it makes you, like, it makes you laugh, like, like truly laugh, or it's something that sticks with you, uh, it's sort of like a truism that if you do comedy, you become instantly harder as a person uh, to, to be made to laugh. Like you, you become sort of a humorless person, ironically. Uh, like you never want to perform in front of a room full of comics because they're all gonna stand there like they're in a lecture, like right. studying. 
Okay, um, that's funny. And they won't laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're like, what? yeah, like what you did there. It's like, then laugh, you asshole. No, no, like, no, no. Uh, so I think if something really makes me laugh, then I'll try to jot that down or think about like what what was funny about that. Like why why did I find that funny? Was there something I expected that that sort of twisted around, or is that just like a really funny idea? You know, like uh, sometimes like Jerry Seinfeld would say like some some words are funny, like just strings of words, <laughs> right. like almost like uh, like a joke is music. And if you punctuate a sentence in a certain way, it just comes off as funny. And uh, so, yeah, noting why something is funny is definitely good. But I'm I, I'm a big like conversation guy. I like hanging out with other people that I find funny. And if uh, if we just sort of get into a lively conversation and we're not thinking about something, and then it leads to a really hilarious place, and somebody says something genuinely clever, something amazing, uh, or there's some banter that goes on that could be a bit, uh, I, I might co-op that i definitely have friends that i sit down with and we just we shoot the shit and we bounce ideas around sure. and and after two three hours like there's probably five ten jokes in there in that conversation do you if, do improv uh i no, i used to i used to do improv uh, back in canada okay and uh, i would say be long before i ever went up and did stand-up comedy i was most comfortable getting up and just doing characters or sketches and uh and i think that that freedom that freewheeling element of improv uh, helps because you don't dismiss any idea. So if something comes in your head and you think it's funny, uh, if there's an impulse to say, ah, no, it's not funny, <laughs> that, that doesn't help necessarily. If you really say, okay, I found that idea funny, I'm going to write a joke about it, I'm going to figure out something to say, you might go up a lot of times at an open mic and not get laughs with it, but you're at least going to give it its shot. Right? right, you can kill it. It can it can go in the vast, robust joke graveyard that you develop for yourself over time. Uh, but you got to give it a shot. You got to try to find something to say about it. And so improv, I think that fearlessness helps because otherwise it's hard to make new material. If you keep a standard that's high and you're like, okay, well that's not going to be funny because it's not as funny as that other joke that gets laughs. Well then, hell, like you haven't given that like that seed a chance to grow. Sure. Yeah, there's such a difference between improv and stand up. It's two completely different skills, really. Definitely. More props to the people that can do both. By the way, we can edit anything out if there's... Oh, if no. If you no. need to stop at any point. All the silences, I think, are perfect. you got to give people <laughs> listening a, tr a chance to think, to admire you, oh, to yeah. imagine you <laughs> standing on a dodgeball court, perhaps twisting over your leg, maybe some large, comically oversized man toss the ball aggressively at your foot and that's yeah. really the reason or a comically <laughs> small asian girl threw the ball at your foot <laughs> and it just cracked it just went down and maybe maybe people could be imagining what what happened really yeah, yeah. In, in actuality I, I i did break it as i was losing that that particular game so that yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a double whammy well if, if you ended the story by saying and then i won the dodgeball game after you rolled the foot if only yeah that's the story we all want to hear <laughs> no as far as your involvement with a little organization called Liars League, right? Uh, today being the 26th, you just had a Liars League event yesterday. How did that go? <laughs> oh, yeah. Today yeah, is the, the 26th, 26th of February. Well, we're not recording before that, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it was great. Uh, lots of attendees. I think 77 was the official count and uh, made quite a bit uh, in terms of... No. So we have this event coming up, and hopefully by the time <laughs> we listen to it, it's going to be cool. But it's actually monthly. It's going to happen uh, on the last Monday of uh, of each month, and the venues may change, but uh, it's called Liars League HK. You can Google it. What's and Liars League all about? Liars League is basically uh, it's it was started here in Hong Kong by a girl named Isabel Chung, and she uh, she was borrowing the name and the idea from a group that started uh, initially in London. It spread to Leeds, which I don't know much about England, but I hear is a shithole. Um, <laughs> but they have Liars League, so that must be okay. Are you British? Feel free to send your feedback to. That's right. That's Sean right. Ebert. All the Brits who've been outraged by that, <laughs> please. I I'll gladly not listen to or confirm you have to say. that Leeds is indeed a shithole. Sure, that's fine too. And it went to New York as well. But Liars League is is basically uh, it's a co-op a group between uh, writers and actors. Um, essentially, actors will act out short stories that writers uh, pen for that those events. So their original short pieces, uh, usually like a thousand to fifteen hundred words, something like that. Um, be as creative as possible. Not monologues necessarily. They're not. It's not like stand-up comedy. Um, more of a genuine uh, short story, and then those are given anonymously to actors, who will then uh, 
read them out uh, dramatically in front of a, in front of a crowd. And the whole event's uh, for, to be free or extremely low cost, and it's to bring the actors and the writers together in town and sort of develop the uh, the theater community around. And but it's it's very free form. It's not a a play. So each event uh, has eight actors that perform with an mm. intermission after the fourth. And uh, some of them are funny, some of them are tragic, some of them are uh, are interesting, different, weird, wacky, and. Uh, and if you go on YouTube and you look up some of these stories, like they're they're sort of fascinating. It's a really different type of performance to, uh, as an actor, to actually have to read a narrator's voice and then different characters' voices. So it's uh, it's very much more like storytelling. All right, and and everyone who is writing and te- performing the stories is actually pre-screened. They're they're guaranteed quality uh, writers and actors. Yeah, so the <laughs> the people uh, the people who are the liars who are uh, sort of administrating the group will will accept the stories and will and will pick the best ones and uh, and also audition the actors. So yeah, you yourself uh, are an acting judge for Liars League. How do you judge whether somebody is LL material? Uh, well, basically, I look at breasts. On Size first, okay, that's then, a good, uh, good then the face, of course. Right. Uh, <laughs> Biggest well, man boobs wins. I think uh, I think a willingness to commit entirely is is important. I know that uh, like I, d- I don't have a, a robust experience as an actor. I, I did you know high school plays stuff like that. Uh, so it was eons ago. But I think uh, performance like improv like stand up. Uh, the the more you're willing to commit, the more you're willing to sell something, to be unself conscious about your performance, mm-hmm. the better it's going to go. The more like, uh, the more the audience is going to be just hypnotized by what you're doing on the stage. And so, to me, when somebody comes in and they say, "Okay, it's kind of my first time doing like a story like this, but uh, here goes," and then they just blow it out of the water. They just they just give it their all. They do voices. They do actions. They truly get into those characters. Uh, it's one of those moments where when it's finished, you say, yeah, I didn't look away once, you know? I never, in my mind, was like, yeah, I should have a burrito later, right? Like, if, if it's really a good performance, it's, uh, it's beyond judging in sort of like a concrete way, like ticking off things on a checklist. So if, if somebody comes in and they care, I think we feel comfortable giving them any piece and Great. seeing where they're going to go with it. Excellent. And for uh, listeners that want to check out the other side of the uh, Liars League table, you can actually listen to uh, Alex Milner's tale of being uh, uh, judged by Sean on the first episode of Golden Lucky Good Time uh, podcast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a shout out for another yeah. podcast. Yeah, you know. Holy shite. We're, we're helping each other out here. <laughs> uh, so let's see. So you're a musician here in Hong Kong. Are you? Are you? What do, what do you play? Guitar? I play guitar. Okay. I, musician is the is the wrong word. Oh, okay. How would you describe um, your 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 musical talents? Uh, s- street guitarist. Okay. Guy guy who oh, who no uh, busker maybe would be a better. Yeah. Uh, musician sounds pretty like it's it's a little formal, you know. Well, tell us about that aspect of your life. How do how do you use your guitar? <laughs> uh, uh yeah, that's uh I was playing guitar since I was like uh 6 or 7 years old. My parents uh like like good Asian parents uh, put me in. Uh, I am not Asian, but they, as Asian parents, they put me in a guitar. Uh, I hated it. It was classical guitar. Uh, despised it. Tried to quit as quickly as I could. Um, <laughs> eventually returned to it years later after I'd quit when I found out that... Uh, that girls like guys that play guitar. It doesn't matter what they look like. <laughs> yeah, they don't um, really spell that out for you when you're a kid, do they? Yeah, if they told you that, though, <laughs> yeah, you'd probably spend your ample free time without your Xbox on and playing that guitar because nobody ever got laid because of how good they were at PlayStation, unless, I guess, they were Korean uh, <laughs> playing StarCraft or something like that. But uh, but no, I, I actually got back into it years later. I, I hate to admit this uh, because I saw lots of guys getting attention from girls uh, in, in my res floor in university. Sitting on the club. Blood, uh, yeah, play, those guys, play. those those douchebags that John Belushi eventually smashed the guitar on right. in Animal House. Uh, but but years later, actually after playing for all the wrong reasons, um, I had an extended period of time separated from my guitar and came to realize that I really liked playing it. And so uh, it was only since I've sort of grown up and, and become an adult that I, I take it seriously and I, I keep it with me. And, and it's something I do mostly as a hobby, but... Uh, at some point, it, I was doing it in front of someone, and, and so I've wound up playing with uh, some different people and performing in different venues, but um, it's more of a, 
it's more of a labor of love than than a, there's no and uh, you, you played here in Hong Kong yes okay. uh, yeah at uh, backstage we've we've played I play with a group called the homestead okay uh, the homestead is uh, is was started by Aaron Andrews and, and Beth Schultes who are two awesome awesome people and they run this folk music collective and um it's uh it's they basically co-opt all kinds of really interesting and, and diverse musicians around hong kong folk music collective co-opt doesn't sound at all like a hippie thing no no <laughs> there's no drugs involved in the hippie commune co-op of folk music but they <laughs> uh no, you can edit that. No, uh, <laughs> the bagpipers, uh, mandolin players. Uh, Beth plays violin. Aaron Aaron uh, plays guitar and sings, and he's amazing. He's uh, an incredible songwriter and a great guitar player and singer. And so they do shows all the time. Uh, I, and their last show was actually this past Friday, uh, which is in the future for me. It's tomorrow, but uh, <laughs> at Joyce is not there. And they've done fill in the blank and uh, beating heart and the launch and they've been all over town but uh so i play with them as much as i possibly can and uh and it's a lot of fun but sometimes just off on my own and, and around town as well all right. i think i've seen uh in i am always scouring for the events every week so i think i have seen the homestead, the homestead. i'm so. plugging it please check it out they are awesome it's an adorable show bring your girlfriend Who i'll cares? make sure it's to cool. I'll make sure to mention it next time i see it up on the internet there we'll continue talking about homestead events as they continue <laughs> Uh, so you've been here, you say less than a year, but you've already pretty involved in kind of the entertainment scene here in Hong Kong. Um, do you think it's possible for a Guaylo to make it in the Hong Kong entertainment scene? I in quotes. <laughs> yeah, you, he did use quotes there. Finger quotes. For those of you not sitting in the room with us. Uh, I, it, I think it depends on what you mean by the, the entertainment scene, only because... Um, you know, the, the music industry is its own beast. The film industry has its own uh, wing. There are uh, there are guilos, as you I say. I don't know. When I look at Sean Hebert, <laughs> I think triple threat. Right. No. Uh, there there are people I, I'm aware. I'm not entirely familiar. I think there are. there's a Caucasian girl who sings in Cantonese who is quite popular. She grew up here. Uh, if you were to hate on her with with terms like guilo you could you could call her that but i th i think <laughs> she's made it i know there's there's local actors um that are from abroad that that uh that do a lot of work here i mean there's a great 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 comedian named uh, vivek mabubani and he would probably be the the best comic in hong kong uh, grew up here but uh he's of indian descent and you've probably seen him on TVs, on commercials. He's he's on all posters over the place. in the MTR station. He's on posters in the MTR station. He is excellent. Uh, he's a graphic designer. He's a musician. He's a performer. He's an MC, and uh, and he does jokes all the time about being uh, called Guilo on on uh, in in town. But he speaks fluent Cantonese and English. I think as long as you are willing to understand the barriers in Hong Kong, and as long as you manage the expectation for what you think making it really means. Um, Sure, I think you could make it here in Hong Kong. You can make uh, a career of whatever you'd like to. Uh, to to think really like more deeply about what you're asking, though, I think the scene is growing here. I think Hong Kong is is an economic hub. It's it's a financial hub certainly in Asia, if not the the world. And an art scene here is in its infancy. I think it mm -hmm. will be robust. I think if you look at cities like the Londons and the New Yorks, uh, like just awesome art scenes. There were times when also those cities. Uh, were just financial hubs, right? Or were just a mere port or whatnot. Uh, and with money comes people, which comes uh, the culture. And I, I think uh, there's lots of people doing lots of incredible things here, but building those audiences and building that attention and, and making people understand that on a Friday or Saturday night they can uh, leave the laptop at home and they can go out and enjoy an evening watching stand-up comedy or theater or music or, or whatever they want to actually go out and see uh, is 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 a reason to actually leave the house and, and build that the art scene. That is exactly what this show is all about. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, and that's what, you know, here as we sit in the HK MAG <laughs> offices here, uh, that's hopefully what we're trying to promote as well with the with the stage section, with the with the art exhibitions, and, and promoting uh, just people doing creative things here in Hong Kong. No, I, I definitely will admit I utilize uh, your website's event section to kind of to help with the event research. It's not, you know, I check many Shameless places, plug. There you go. Shameless <laughs> plug. Yeah, sure. Well, let's save it. it for the plug section. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other hobbies that you do while here in Hong Kong? 
Uh, you know, I, I decoupage when decoupage. I can. Uh, I go uh, deep sea crab fishing when I've got a little time off. Uh, Underwater welding. Uh, yeah, I do some uh, freelance superhero work uh, up in the new territories. Oh, you may have heard of me. You're that kick ass. Yeah, I'm I'm called Beer Monster actually. Beer I Monster. go around terrorizing minibus drivers in a large Godzilla-like suit. So keep your eye on the news for that. Uh, other hobbies? Uh, no, trying to have a social life uh, while balancing uh, meeting all the other creative people in town and, and trying to keep building the scene here. Pretty busy guy. Uh, are there any other groups in Hong Kong or elsewhere that you're affiliated with that you would like to mention that we haven't already? Hmm. Any other groups in Hong Kong? Or elsewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, no. I, if I do, I'll, you can, I will think of it and I, All will, right. I will make a Just terrible blurt it plug out. later. Yeah, blurt it I'll out. scream it into the <laughs> microphone in the middle of a, of a question. <laughs> cool. Uh, so the question I ask everyone is someone... The Joven Goach Band. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Good one. Okay. Yeah, Joven Goach. I definitely He's have awesome. Them yeah, as well. if you've never seen his band, awesome. Haven't seen him yet. Okay. <laughs> if someone was coming to Hong Kong for the first time and they only had 24 hours in the city, what would you tell them is the number one thing they have to do while they're here? Oh, yeah. I, I think, I think uh, Hong Kong is one of those cities where there's not a lot of, uh, of tourist traps. Uh, like it's not a lot of things where it's a must see there's no Eiffel Tower there's no Statue of Liberty or whatever there is that large Buddha but you know <laughs> I, I think you'd probably have a more cultural experience going to a temple rather than going to the maybe the large Buddha on Lantau um, yeah it's changed a lot since uh, I yeah. went there in 2005 it's I th very I think, commercial yeah <laughs> you know if you want to go on those like gondolas or whatever they got out there you could do that too or Disneyland or whatever but I, I think really if you want to get uh, if the reason for your trip is to get an understanding of what this city is all about, um, I think the coolest thing about Hong Kong is is just walking the streets and and seeing, especially like I live in Kowloon, and walking through Kowloon, if you take forty minutes to walk, uh, you can go through a bird garden, a flower market, a fish market, then you can be through a market full of ladies' clothes, then you're in a like crazy ass sex toy market near Temple Street. Then you're down near Chungking Mansions. If you think of all these different areas and just put a mental picture in your mind, if you've been to any of them, of what it looks like, um, the diversity of this city, the smells, the sights, the sounds, the food, if you were to on that walk, jump in any restaurant that you saw where something looked tasty or looked cool, jump in a gallery if you were to walk by it, uh, come up here on the island and uh, take a hike up to the peak. Uh, the tram's cool, but like taking a walk up there is really interesting. And, and so if, if somebody had a day, I'd say, uh, try to skip transit and, and just heel toe and uh, maybe try to jump across the harbor on the Star Ferry because that's cool. That's dying. We need to save the Star Ferry and make sure people keep jumping across the it's harbor. It's easy for on you that. to say two legs. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Do as much walking and as quickly as you can, if, if possible. But yeah, just walk around the town. I think that's the best way to see it, and that's the way that you'll walk away seeing Hong Kong is like kind of a city that's unlike any other in the world. All right, you heard it here first from Sean A. Bear. Take a hike. All right. This guy's funny. Hey, I try. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for answering those questions. Uh, you're, you're welcome. The grilling is over, but uh, let's get into the fun part of the show here. Uh, our first game, What's Up or Down Hong Kong? This okay. I was I having fun for the record. That was, that was all. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Oh, man. I thought I, I okay. had you under the uh, lights like this was an interrogation. So humble. Are you Canadian by any chance? No. Selling is so short. I'm a, I'm a nice American. You know, we're not all dicks. Uh, not so touching that one. <laughs> please don't. What's up or down Hong Kong? Okay. Ten items. And uh, it's just rapid fire. You say up if you like it, da down if you're not into it. And uh, let's go. Cats. Down. Red minibuses. Up, yeah. Socialism. Yeah, no, down. Up, up, up. <laughs> Come on, up. Clouds. Down. Figure skating. Y up. Naps. Up, yeah. New territories. Yeah, up. Quebec. Y up. Mm, up. <laughs> Pop. <laughs> Pop music. Up. Reality TV shows. Down. Okay. So are you a dog guy? Uh, I'm not a... I don't consider myself an animal person in general, though I had like basically every pet you could have save like uh, save reptiles, but I've had like good professional relationships with all the pets that I've ever had in my life. 
Okay. Yeah. I feel like I don't want to like, <laughs> buy, you know, I don't want to like subject them to me like sitting on a podcast somewhere like saying I like dogs and then go home to my mom's house and my cat's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> you don't think I have iTunes? I heard that shit. It's a cool cat. Uh, red mini buses, you prefer them over the green ones? Uh, oh, no. I see. Now you're, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a false thing that you just did to me there. Saying I like, oh, you like chocolate? Oh, red, what? So there's a problem with, uh, with candy now? There's uh, some issue with candy? Red mini buses. Red mini Great buses. or the greatest? <laughs> right. They're the only ones that take me home well wasted to my home in Kowloon from the okay. end of Long Kwai Fong. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm up with them. Good but point. no octopus access? That's a little... That's a little troubling. Yeah, true. Uh, so let me see. Uh, not in. Oh no, you you changed your mind on socialism. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't. Not communism. In, socialism. I know. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> if you say no to socialism, then people might. Uh, people well, last might last week, this spot was free market capital capitalism. What would oh, you have said to that? Free market capitalism. I I would said no. Okay. I would said down with down with free market capitalism. Okay. I'm gonna cool. I'm gonna identify myself as a as a leftist <laughs> as long as no one who cares is listening. <laughs> uh, nobody's listening. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. Anything else here? You like new territories? Uh, you Love seem it. you seem to f- waver a bit on Quebec. Is this scientific? Is it? Do you have? Is this gonna be like <laughs> a, an eHarmony profile? Where at the end of it, some like three chicks are gonna walk in the room. They're like. Congratulations, a French Canadian, a triad, and a lady from Shatin or whatever. It's true. Everyone's out to get you. Uh, I wavered on Quebec. Well, you know, <laughs> because uh, as a Canadian, um, I am. I have a French last name, but I, I think Quebec is a nuanced situation that Do we should not polarize ourselves by saying <laughs> oui ou non on Quebec. Do you uh, side with the uh, se- secessionists? No, no, no. I'm I'm from I'm from Ontario, and I think uh, Canada's greatness uh, lies partially in its unity, and it's from sea to shining sea to shining sea. And uh, Quebec would be fucked if they didn't have the rest of Canada. <laughs> Come on, let's be real. What are they doing out there? No, they're cool. They want to be part of it's us. It's a beautiful so. sentiment. Right. Of course. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Cool. So we got to know you a little bit better there. Let's see. Next section. How about do we do some news? Do some current event stories here? Okay. I don't read the news. Yeah, just <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you and so you, you sad. let me know what you think. It's too sad. So, uh, recently a tour group of 36 mainlanders had to sleep overnight on their bus when their Xingyi hotel ended up being already being full. Authorities are now investigating if members of the group booked the tour through an unlicensed travel agency and fingers are being pointed between Hong Kong and PRC travel agencies as to mm. who is responsible. Mm. Many of the tourists vowed never to return to Hong Kong. Which I say, A, it's not all of Hong Kong's fault that you used a crappy tour service. And B, I don't think too many people here will be sad that there will be 36 less mainlanders. Uh, the Hong Kong Travel Industry Council intervened and found accommodations for the group sleeping on the bus mm-hmm. and has said that the HK tour agency, known as 3A Holidays, seriously violated industry regulations. On February 21st, it was announced that the agency has been suspended for this incident. Right. Any any thoughts on this? Well, um, <laughs> I think that... Uh, the fact that those people were sleeping on a tour bus was uh, maybe not the least egregious thing that's ever happened to a mainland tourist uh, yeah. in well, Hong Kong. For for everyone that's uh, living in a cramped Hong Kong apartment, it's like tour bus seat. That's actually pretty yeah, that's, spacious. That's kind of roomy. That? I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> they didn't, uh, you know, like bully somebody into buying something at a jewelry store and not let them leave or, you know. Sure. Like uh, it could ber- be berate them for having their child pee in a bottle at a Chihuahua restaurant or whatever. Yeah. Well, I can only imagine how, many, how much uh, feces was spilt on that bus well, overnight. You know, it did, if you saw that, that's the related story to me is like, you know, on the cover of Standard yesterday, the, there's like a little kid's peeing in a bottle at a restaurant. In right, TST. I saw that one. And so, you, so the, the Standard's got the, the peed off is their very punny uh, headline. <laughs> right, yeah. But is that a cover story? Is that a cover story? It is or in Hong is Kong. It, the peeing is not the story, though. The the mainland person being doing what they would do in the mainland in Hong Kong is what is what has made it a story. How many homeless people have you seen peeing on the street? How many comedians from Canada have you seen peeing on the street? If you look very closely, say after ten o'clock in, at night. But at is, least they have the manners to not do it in front of everyone. Uh, you if, would go into a back alley somewhere, right? If No, no. <laughs> See, if I went to a Chihuahua restaurant right now and I pulled my pants down and I peed right in the middle of four tables, 
That might get me arrested, but that's not front page news. White man pees in restaurant is not front page news on the standard. But right. six year old kid from Shenzhen, that's that's front it doesn't page fit news. The narrative that's what I'm saying doesn't. is yes. that is that you can rip off anyone you want. Tour agencies rip off people all the time. But the fact that it had some something to do with mainland this mainland angle. versus Hong right. Kong thing. We're, let's just the media is really pushing this. Isn't it? Okay. There's well, that's the one of the three stories that the media in Hong Kong is gonna. It gets eyes, right? It gets eyes on whatever. Tuesday's you write. property prices, Wednesday's <laughs> mainlanders. This is so Thursday's true. Thursday's CY Lung. We might hey, go back actually, to property. Let's, uh, let's let's let this be a, a segue into my next story. Okay, so continue. D- despite previous cooling measures put in place by the Hong Kong government that put additional taxes on foreigners buying property. Property prices have rebounded significantly recently. Trans- right. Transactions last month were up 65.2% over the previous month. Shortage of supply is cited as the reason for raising the price or for raising prices. I hear that many of the apartments being purchased by mainlanders are purchased solely for their investment value and are sitting empty today, so it's like some so- shortage. I think what needs to be implemented is a use it or lose it campaign. What do you think? I think that uh I think that just because you make something illegal doesn't always mean that that's actually how it's going to go. And we just talked about another industry that was corrupt, and I'm not really sure uh, why anyone would think that as somebody who's not been here for seven years that I couldn't find some person willing to shirk the normal process to flub the paperwork and get me the flat that I want to pay millions of dollars for up in the mid-levels. I can probably do it. Just as I can go down to uh, TST and I can basically do whatever the heck I want. If the tax is 15%, you could give somebody a 5% cut instead and a local person. Are you you selling flats underneath the table? That sounds like uh, some pretty accurate math. Well, my wife is from Hong Kong. I could be using her as like a uh, property mule. Right. Well, (laughs) I mean, call me a cynic and all, but I, I, you know, while you may like or dislike the rule, it's just a rule, you know. Apparently, uh, I'm not Chinese supposed people. to download Patrice O'Neill <laughs> albums either, but hell, here we are. We're, we're learning a lot about you, Sean. Mm. <laughs> All right, story number three. I recently saw a video. This is like me personal. This isn't a story I saw. I just wanted to report this. I recently saw a video of Hong Kong legislators at the LegCo committee uh, meeting yelling at each other in Cantonese and in English. No. One was the man known as Longhair. Are you familiar with this guy? Right. What, what fruit was he throwing? This time. No, no, no fruit this time. Okay. The man he was arguing with dropped the f bomb at one point. No. So this is what I, where I was. Uh, it struck me as odd. Uh, unfortunately, I have no idea what they were really arguing about. Uh, but I'm just worried about what kind of, I- of example are they setting for the children of Hong Kong? I- if this happened in the states, somebody w- their political career would be ended. Just the media would jump all over it. But here, it, it doesn't really get any traction. But I guess uh, the f bomb doesn't really count for much in Hong Kong. No. Well, I mean, I th- you know, I think. Uh I think there's different traditions of legislative politics and uh, where I come from in the more British parliamentary system. Uh, I know you're from the the U.S. system. Uh, I think a robust energy in a legislature is important. I think, uh, you know, in Canada, if somebody starts speaking, everyone else is going to start speaking over them. Shame. (laughs) Shame, Mr. Prime Minister, right? And, uh, you know... There's, there's a time and a place, and I think <laughs> if you're in a question period or whatever and you want to start throwing the F-bomb around... Hell, I, when I was living in Korea, there was a vote, and one of the parties locked the doors for the vote so the other party couldn't get in. So oh, those yeah. guys took benches and fire extinguishers, <laughs> broke down the door, then fist fought the other party, then proceeded with the vote. So really, I think, you know... Yeah, South Korea and Taiwan both have straight up brawls. You got a long way to fall, you know. You're throwing f bombs and throwing fruit around. It's like you know, once you're throwing bombs and bringing MMA moves in, then then you then come talk to me. But so you're telling them get some balls. Well, as long (laughs) as long as as we're moving towards some form of communication, there's there's an openness in that uh, legislature, and this you know this is part of the two systems element. Uh, There is a system here. If that's what's going on in there, I don't think. uh, I don't think if anyone's ever seen British politics, I don't, I'm not sure anyone should be complaining about right. this level of discourse here in, in Hong Kong. I think uh, there's lively ha- activity in, in the legislature. They're passionate. Sure. Good. It's important. You should be passionate. Definitely. 
I feel like I'm uh, putting you in some weird spots here, so I'll try to back off a little no, bit. No more weird <laughs> than any any other day in life. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, that's it for the uh, news. Thanks for your comments there. Uh, so maybe we'll do one event section here because I found some interesting. Were, you, were your three mainlanders property prices and the legislature? Did you you actually just hit on the yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the news, wasn't it? Yeah, we did it all. It's, uh, it's sevens. Uh, we're not going to talk about the sevens. What else is happening in town? Oh, it's coming up soon. Okay, uh, okay. We'll, we'll, Sorry. we'll get it. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's get into the sports and rec section. He shoots. He scores. Sports and Rec. Sports and Rec this week, which we don't normally do first, but this is just the one event section I'm going to go over with Sean here. So let's get into the events. Uh, Wednesday, February 27th, we have some meetups. Do you use meetup.com at all, Sean? I've heard of no, I've heard of it. It's that's uh, making it's like events. You run an yeah. event and you can all sorts you of different don't groups. have any friends, so you got to go out and sorry. I, I'm, it, it, all, all, all of a sudden, it didn't sound good when I was saying it. But you can find people with similar interests. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a way sure. better way to say it. <laughs> Bunch uh, of losers go out to a, some some loser event. Yeah. No. 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 So it let's sounds get into cool. it. it. Sounds fun. <laughs> Uh, meetups. We got uh, expats hangouts uh, having dinner at Bistro Manchu and going ice skating both in the same day. Uh, the Project X team will be doing a level one sport climbing course. So that's what you can do on Wednesday. On Thursday, the 28th, we have an equestrian event. First day of the Hong Kong Masters at Asia World Expo in Tung Chung. The first five star accredited competition on the equestrian calendar to take place in Asia since the 2008 Olympic Games. There are fun-filled activities for the whole family. Check uh, Longines, L-O-N-G-I-N-E-S, hkmasters.com for more info. Going on through March 2nd, $150 to $450. So yeah. that sounds like a cool Did one. you say Elite Riders? The world's elite show jumping riders. Yeah, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> I think the horses, the horses. <laughs> are elite. I don't well, think the guys an doing Olympic any event. jumping, that's a, for sure. It's an Olympic event. I'd like those guys to run around and do some show jumping. Just a bunch of guys wearing silly helmets and and wearing undersized blazers trying to <laughs> trying to clear four-foot posts. That would be cool. Go over to Happy Valley, and those jockeys are getting paid a ton, and all they're really doing is being small. I think it's as much a sport as cockfighting is a sport, really. Yeah. It's, it's, it's for the gambling, right? <laughs> the people are doing nothing at all. Right. But, you know, it's something well, to watch. you got to feed the chickens, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, here we got meetups on Thursday as well. The Hong Kong Storytellers Workshop. Perfect that perfect anecdote. Are you cool. familiar with the storytellers? I am, yeah. There's a couple storytelling groups in town. The friends of the show, David Young and uh, Tom Tiding, will be putting that on. Uh, Hong Kong Italian Food and Wine Lover uh, Meetup Group are having an event called Super Tuscans. <laughs> yep. Hong Kong Trail Runners <laughs> having a Thursday night peak run. Super Tuscans. What Super is that Tuscans. about? I don't know, man. It must be some awesome uh, Tuscan wine, maybe. I don't know. A bunch of Tuscans running out of uh, phone booths <laughs> in town. Tuscan Raiders. Weren't I those the, no the guys from Star Wars? Mean. Friday, uh, March 1st, we have some meetups. Hong Kong Social Media Group having social media for work and play. And the Movies and Activities meetup will be seeing Silver Linings Playbook and having dinner and drinks. See, yeah. any mo- see any movies lately? Then, then, then sex. <laughs> well, <laughs> going to go see a rom-com. They're going to have dinner and drinks, otherwise known as speed dating. Th- it is pretty much a, a date with it a sounds awesome. random group of people. Sounds awesome. Did you see Silver Linings Playbook yet? Oh, man, I didn't. Uh, it's, it's out in Hong Kong on the 28th of February. And uh, Oh, it's not out yet. Oh, I that's not the one. I was thinking of Cloud Atlas. Right, yeah, Cloud Atlas yeah. has been out. Yeah, Silver Linings Playbook uh, is going to be awesome. And uh, one of the other writers here at HK reviewed it. And four out of five stars. Nice. And I have absolute faith in David O. Russell. He directed The Fighter. And okay. I think this movie is going to be awesome. It's got like a Best Picture nomination. So. By the way, I, I recently saw an art film, uh, The New Die Hard. In, yes. In D-Box. Yes. At, uh, East Moncock. It was uh, pretty awesome. It, the, the seat that moved around with the, the action. Yeah, I don't know if you're, are you allowed you're to say D box on on the uh, on a podcast. D box or deep box? Yeah, uh, uh, never mind. It's a little racy. Anyway, <laughs> Saturday, March second, we have some meetups, uh, many hiking events going on that day. Uh, the Hipster Fellowship Group is having a visit to the Wetland Park in Tin Shui Wai. Wait, uh, hold on. Yeah, the Hitler. Sorry, the no, hip. <laughs> not the, the Hitler. The Hipster Fellowship hipster is going fellowship. to a park. Yeah, wetland part. That's that's bizarre. Uh, don't forget your scarf if you're going to be attending, and your fedora. 
Uh, Treasure Hunters Group having a city adventure game. Uh, the Hong Kong Photography Group shooting in the style of Instagram. Well, why don't they just use Instagram? Uh, single Club having drinks. Uh, uh, no, single. the Single Club. It should be the Singles Club, but they call it Single Club. Having drinks, music, laugh, and meet new people's event. I think a local person that's might a good, be heading That's that a good name. Up. Definitely. Uh, Sunday, March 3rd, there's an animal-related event, the SPCA Family Wagon Walk 2013 at Hong Kong Disneyland Resort. So if you got a family and you have a dog, you might want to check out Disneyland that day. It could be fun. Uh, meetups that day, bird watching in Hong Kong hiking meetup. Uh, the Hipster Fellowship's added again, this time seeing the Chinglish exhibit at the Hong Kong Arts Festival. And the Hong Kong Eclectic Movie Night having uh, Studio Night International Movies at the Hong Kong Brew House. And, uh, of course, support them so since they do those awesome open mics that Sean hosts. And uh, Monday, March 4th, tennis event, Hong Kong Showdown at Asia World Expo in Tung Chung. Exhibition matches between John McEnroe and Ivan Lendl. McEnroe's yeah. coming to town. Yeah, Johnny oh, Mac. God. Johnny On the 4th? Is that the 4th? Oh, I got to go to that. Yeah, March 4th. Uh, if he doesn't spike the racket and uh, knock over the ref I'm tower. Going, I'm, I'm going in a ref jersey. <laughs> That's I want to be screamed at by McEnroe. That's the whole goal. Should run across the court. You've Make made it when you get yelled at by McEnroe. <laughs> Definitely. Also, Lee Na and Carolyn Wozniacki. <laughs> Wozniacki, I guess. Uh, 7.45 p.m., $400 to 2250 Hong Kong dollars. I guess that's the front row uh, for you can shake Johnny Mac's hand there. Uh, check worldtennisday.com for details. We have meetups that day. I Am Happy Project having a cre Create Your Vision Board event. So, are you familiar with vision boards? Where you, I have you put a bunch no of, idea what we're put talking Put a bunch about. of things that you want on on a piece of cardboard, and then you achieve them. Isn't that like the, the computer retard version <laughs> of Pinterest or whatever? Yeah, something like that. I think they, there was a book about it, the, uh, the message, the... Oh, I can't remember what You want to meet a bunch called. of kindergartners. That's the, <laughs> that's the event to go out to. There you go. Yeah, it's like a, it is like a kindergarten activity. And lastly, Tuesday, March 5th, for Sports and Rec, we have some meetups. The Vegetarian Supper Club are having a meetup. Oh, that's going to be fun. Uh, the Hypnosis Practice Group will be practicing hypnosis. and uh, They we should do both of those together. <laughs> it's the only way the vegetarians are going to enjoy their supper meetup. <laughs> they can hypnotize the uh, people who aren't vegetarians into right, of cramming course. the, the, the uh, veggies down their throat. And there's also badminton and volleyball that day. So. Uh, yeah, different stuff going on there. There's one, one event section. I'll do the rest on my own. We'll start with uh, Arts. Uh, it's the Arts. It's the Arts. It's the Arts. All right, it's the Arts this week. We have some ongoing events, a film event, the Make a Difference Film Festival going on at UA Cinema locations throughout the city. It's a film festival featuring documentaries and the Bollywood film English Vinglish. Check out tiny.cc slash hk hyphen mad for more information. Uh, going on through March 17th, uh, we have an ongoing art event through March 1st. Uh, it's called MySpace by Wong Kai Keen and David Smith at Amelia Johnson Contemporary in Central. Uh, view the works from the two artists that have vastly different styles. Another art event, Louis Lau in the offing at Gallery Exit South Site in Aberdeen, going on through March 2nd. Uh, an art event called Glasscapes at Identity Art Gallery in Shung Wan. The British artist Tim Bertjeman shows his works in glass, canvas, and wood. Going on through March 2nd, open at 10 a.m. Another art event, Equal Relationship at Blind Spot Gallery in Central. Uh, Chinese artists 223 and Ren Hong express their individualism and existential concerns in a joint exhibition of personal photography through February 28th, so that's ending real soon, 11th a.m. to 7 p.m. Got even more art events here, a lot uh, of art events this week. Um, Soul Cleansing at Sin Sin Fine Arts in Central. Uh, it's a group exhibition from seven artists, so I'm sure you'll get a lot of different styles there. It's going on through February 28th as well, so check that out soon, 9.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Uh, single day events we have on Friday, March 1st, a music event, the other Ebony, that's E-B-E-N-E, -E -E, at Hong Kong Academy of Performing Arts in Wan Chai. 
It's a string quartet plus drums that blends musical styles and plays an eclectic mix of pieces from classical to jazz to rock. 8.15 p.m. Tickets start at $210. Uh, something very similar to that. I think maybe even some of the same artists. On Saturday, March 2nd, a music event, Quator Ebony at Hong Kong Academy of Performing Arts in Wan Chai as well. And it's a string quartet playing classical music, including Mozart, Mendelssohn, and Beethoven. Also at 8.15 p.m., tickets also start at $210. Sunday, March 3rd, we have a cultural event, the 9th Tai Kok Choi Temple Fair in Kowloon. It's a festive carnival with a variety of traditional Chinese performances, such as the Temple Fair Parade, the 18's, 18 lions dancing on the quinquencennial piles, and the 500-foot luminous night dragon dance, and more. 10 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., free admission. So that's again on Sunday, March 3rd. Uh, another event on the 3rd, Beto it's a music event, Beethoven Violin and Piano Sonatas Concerts. This will be the last of the series at Hong Kong Academy of Performing Arts in Wan Chai, $150. And that's it for It's the Arts this week, moving on into The Get Out. The Get Out this week, we have uh, on Wednesday, February 27th, a happy hour event, Wine Down Wednesdays at Rain, R-A-Y-N-E, in Central. Uh, they have a special $35 a glass on wine from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., so that's a pretty good deal for that part of town. <laughs> Comedy event going on on Wednesday. Comedy.hk presents Open Mic Night at Hong Kong Brew House, of course, and Lan Kwai Fong. Apparently this week it's actually hosted by Nate Shawarko, uh, and that starts at 8 p.m. Thursday, February 28th, we have a music event, Luca Di, Di Tullio, at Peel Fresco Music Lounge on Peel Street. Starts at 9 p.m. Thursday, we also have uh, another comedy event, the third annual Hong Kong International Improv Festival. We, we talked about it last week. And this week, uh, at Takeout Comedy in Soho, uh, improv troops from Germany, Taiwan, Shanghai, Beijing, the U.S., Manila, and of course Hong Kong will be performing. Uh, check TakeoutComedy.com for times, uh, and that's February 28th, so this Thursday through March 3rd, $150. Actually, that's where it's going on this week. It'll actually be going on next week as well, but I'll mention it on next week's show. Club event, Jack Wills Season Airs presents a British tea party at Play in Central. Starts at 10 p.m. It sounds like an interesting one. You might want to check out. Uh, there's a DJ event also on Thursday. DJs from Mars at Magnum and Central. Italian DJ and production team will be performing. Starts at 11 p.m. Free entry for the ladies. One drink included. Never mention how much it costs for the guys, so I don't, I don't know. Magnum should uh, let us in on that information. Well, let me know if you've gone to Magnum recently. How much was it for uh, you if you're a guy? Friday, March 1st, musical event. Sandy Rivera, a.k.a. Kings of Tomorrow, at Key Club in Central. It's electronic music. 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., $200 advance, $300 at the door, includes one drink. Also on Friday night, a DJ event, BTS Radio, Andrew Meza at Triple X Gallery in Shungwan. Starts at 11.30 p.m., $150 to get in there. Uh, Saturday, March 2nd, another Triple uh, X Gallery event, uh, Wall of Sound. It's going to be uh, several different uh, performers uh, performing 50s and 60s pop music with psychedelic colors and special surprises. Starts at 11 p.m., $100 to get into that one, and it's BYOB, as usual, at Triple X Gallery. Final event for the week, uh, Tuesday, March 5th, kind of a larger act coming to town. Adam Lambert will be at Kowloon Bay International Trade and Exhibition Center, 8 p.m., $590 or $790, depending on how close you want to get and, of course, Adam Lambert was a, uh American Idol contestant. I forget if he was the winner or he came in second. But he uh, he was on the show, and uh, so we'll be performing his music. And that's it for the Get Out. And let's get back into 5Q with Sean Hebert. Uh But as far as you, Sean, we have one last thing for you to engage in here. I gotta, I gotta pick your brain on where you got all these events. This is great. <laughs> I'm supposed to do this as like a job, and I, I didn't, oh, I didn't know about like ninety percent of those things. Got to scour. Is that Meetup.com? <laughs> is that where you're getting all that stuff? Oh yeah, some, some of them. Sounds like a gold mine. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, go to my hipster dinner and be done with it. Find all the all the, all your fellow. Hi- You're not a hipster, are you? You don't seem like a hipster. I don't know. I'm, I don't. <laughs> I don't know anything about how, what to wear in the morning, so I don't think I can constitute as a hipster. Yeah. I'm not from Seattle or Portland, so I'm not that, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I think you got to, like, like, I don't try, but, like, I think you have to, like, not try better to be a hipster. Yeah, that's true. You have to be, like, you have to be, like progressively not trying. I'm, I'm so out of it, I can't do it. Uh, okay, 5Q, our favorite game. Sweet. Uh, or 5Q, as I like to abbreviate it. Uh, just five questions, answer them to the best of your ability. We'll okay. see how you do here. Question number one, you were once a game show host. Pick the worst game show of the following. The Price is Right, Press Your Luck, Let's Make a Deal, or None of the Above. Press Your Luck. Yeah, the No Whammies, Is that the no Whammy? Whammies? Oh, Damn. yeah. That is the best game show. So I'm okay. going to go ahead and say uh, that uh, it, Let's Make a Deal is the worst one. Oh, I'm sorry. It's None of the Above. They're all awesome. Oh. They're all awesome. No, what the, what the pig? What, what was it? Pig in a pen or whatever when you, when those, you fuck those around on that? Those are there is zonk uh, whenever you get, you could get all any kind of random thing, right? And, right. Uh, hor- yeah, horrible prizes. It was it was fun picking. Uh, do you want do you want what's but bu- what's behind curtain number two, or do you want what's in my shoe, or something? Crazy? Yeah, it's like a basic premise, but isn't that the same as like you know, it's like deal or no deal, which is like what if we had twenty five doors? Like, but it also had one of the best uh, game show hosts, Monty Hall, was on there, and he runs around at the end, and he's like, uh, "I'll give you a hundred dollars if you have a safety pin in your purse right now." True. And people are like freaking out, trying to go the, through their purse. The <laughs> best, uh, best game show host was uh, Richard Dawson. Dawson. Remember? Oh yeah, the like, Running Man. He'd have like he was cl- in the clothes on, man. clothes on, sex with like all the women in the families right, right in front of their families on Family Feud. The only game show host to fight. Arnold Schwarzenegger. He did. He yep. did. He <laughs> told Arnold, and Arnold said, I'll be back. <laughs> All right. Question number two. You previously refereed ice hockey games. Uh, can you name one of the five players in NHL history who has lost the most teeth? Oh, uh, lost the most teeth. Bobby Clark famously kept no front teeth for his whole career. Okay. But is that the most? Lost the most teeth. No, I'm gonna Bobby uh, Clark final answer. I'll say Bobby Clark final answer. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, he wasn't in the top five. Let me go through these four. Chris Clark lost six teeth. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Last Keith. names are not acceptable. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I, I thought maybe go they on, were related. Is it Chris Robert Clark? Is it Chris Robert? That wasn't Clark? who I was thinking. Of. Uh, Keith Tekachuk. To Chuck. To Chuck. Yeah, Keith Chuck. Six. Uh, teeth gone. Eric Belanger. 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 Oh, I should have gone. <laughs> Belanger. I, Belanger. Eric Belanger. Uh, seven teeth gone. Duncan Keith. Also seven teeth yeah. gone. But the king. Ken Danico. Twelve teeth lost. Yeah. Ken, Ken Danico was a Danico. was an ub, ugly mofo, if you could use the term <laughs> properly there. There you go. Well, uh, okay. You're over two now, but we still nice, got three Nice to go. on the hockey name pronunciation. That's a ballsy <laughs> move, man. Yeah, I know. I'm awful. They're the worst. Don't, don't ever try to pronounce <laughs> hockey player names. I'm in a fantasy hockey league for the first time this year. It was the draft was horrible yeah. for me. <laughs> Alex Onder Ovechkin will uh, be yeah. my first selection. Well, I'm a Penguins fan, so I had to pick a, a lot of Penguins because I actually knew like, and I actually knew it was Yammer Yager, not Jeremy Jagger. Jeremy Jaguar. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, question three: Movies. Well, you're you're a movie guy, so this should be easy for you. Okay. And it actually relates to your views. You gave Flight four out of five stars, Warm Bodies three stars, and Hitchcock two stars. All recent films. Right. Which of these movies got the highest rating on Rotten Tomatoes? Oh. Between uh, Flight, Warm Bodies, and Hitchcock. Not Hitchcock. Uh, I think Warm Bodies had seventy-seven percent, and I think Flight had seventy-eight percent. I think they were really close. I, I'm gonna go ahead and say it might be a trick question. It's warm bodies. Saying warm bodies. Yeah, that's my answer. You're actually correct. Uh, Flight and warm bodies actually both got a critics rating of 78 percent as of today, uh, but warm bodies had a higher audience score with 82 versus Flight's 77. Oh, so. How ridiculously <laughs> difficult! Come on. <laughs> as as a game show host, hey, sir, I will say you, this it is, is your <laughs> job. <laughs> was was my job to do that sort of crap? But yeah. Uh, uh, so that this was alluding to, you already mentioned it, but you're a staff writer at uh, Hong Kong Magazine, right, so yeah, check out his uh, film reviews. Are you still doing the film reviews? Of course, okay. yeah, yeah. We got uh, the new issue that comes out. To, uh, well, will have come out on Friday. Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln was reviewed, and uh, next week's reviews uh, is a movie called Beasts of the Southern Wilds, okay. which is amazing. It's nominated for Best Picture, and uh, if you get a chance to see that, it's on the seventh of March. It comes out, and a French film called Amour, which is going to be. Uh, 
it's like the best, the, the most critically acclaimed film of the year. So if it's bad, is your tagline going to be, should have been called a less? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Not anymore, it won't, I guess. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's still that one. So you saw Lincoln. Yeah. Is anyone who's not American going to be interested in this movie? Absolutely. I think uh, you don't have to be a history buff to like, I mean, it's Spielberg. I, I think uh, historical drama should be entertaining on its own respect, not just for people that, you know, like Schindler's List is a great film, even if you don't know anything about the Holocaust or even if you, if, if you like belligerently don't care about the Holocaust or something, like if, if you're that guy, uh, it still doesn't diminish the merit of the film. And uh, if you like good performances, Daniel Day-Lewis, holy shit. Oh, man, shit. good at everything. Oh, my God. I you drink hear? your milkshake. Did you hear he was he's such a method actor he was texting Sally Field as Lincoln on the set? <laughs> that's like the funniest story I've heard well, about that. If he was really movie. a method actor, would he be texting at all? Well, that's <laughs> that's what we should ask ourselves. Yes. Well, uh, he'll get a piece of my mind if uh, I ever see it. Yeah. <laughs> no. He's awesome. Uh, question number 4, you went to the University of Calgary, right? I did for uh, for yeah for grad school. I went. To. Okay. Uh, so well, you say that. We'll see about that. Yeah, we'll name, see about that. Name the weekly U of C student newspaper that was first published in 1960 and is released on Thursday of each week. Oh shit! <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember in my undergrad it was called the Gazette. I remember that. Ooh, it's a, I'll give you a hint. It's another G word. Damn it! I uh, we once played a football game against the writers of the Gazette, and I suffered a second degree concussion. Jeez. Yeah, and so I, ironically, the only thing I remember about that day was that they were called the Gazette. Uh, no, it's I don't. Another G word. It's another G word. No, it's I, a synonym for glove. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is what is it called? Can you think of a G word that's a synonym for glove? Embarrassingly, well, on the spot, I feel like... Like a medieval glove. You go ahead and make me look stupid. The gauntlet. The gauntlet. The gauntlet. It was called the gauntlet. It's been thrown down. Oh, man. Uh, somebody, I'm going to get an angry email by someone who, <laughs> for some reason, listens to this podcast oh, from man. Calgary. Well, yeah, that's where you got your master's degree. And I was looking online in two different places. One said you got your master's degree in political science. The other one said political satire. Which right. is it? Both? Um, yeah, uh, it's technically... I don't think that any school maybe has a it, political where satire. it says political satire yeah. on the degree. I was in the Department of Political Science, but I okay. studied political satire. Oh, cool. So uh, your degree actually says poli-sci on it. Then. Political science, okay. yeah. I'm, well, a cool. I'm a scientist yeah. of, of no value hey, to I the world. I love political science. That's a, that's a great thing to study in school. Yeah. It's a, so lucrative for jobs after the fact, too, right? Yeah, I always say to people from on stage, if you <laughs> want to know what a value an arts degree has, well... You're looking at it on a stand-up comedy stage, <laughs> folks. That's the job you get at the end of it. All right. Uh, so let's finish strong here. Okay. You got you got one so far. You can get two. Um, that would tie the the low score, I believe. Crap. Oh, yeah. This, but uh, these, multiple these were, pe multiple people have gotten two. These were though. like really specific and hard. Question is, how do aristocrats like their steak prepared? How do aristocrats like their steak prepared? Aristocrats, I think, uh, what you have to do is you have to first take out. Oh, this the this isn't this isn't so complicated. It's just like medium, well done, r rare. Oh, oh, I thought you because they're the aristocrats. Uh, you <laughs> oh, had the to, joke. You had to take the butt plug out, and then when the <laughs> diarrhea went all over the steak, then yeah, I was they wondering would, uh, if you were gonna think vomit some sort of. Uh, menstrual blood that had been sucked out of the grandmother's uh, uh, no I think uh, it it would be uh, medium well no medium rare medium rare medium rare correct medium rare thank you <laughs> so uh, you were once a steakhouse waiter <laughs> yeah yeah that's true okay more than once so actually you do more than one restaurant I was a steakhouse waiter at uh, any really nice places Ruth Chris or no there's a restaurant called uh Actually, I'm not even going to say what it's called because if you asked me any more questions, I would like so I would probably rip into the restaurant. But uh, it's a reputable, perhaps the most reputable steakhouse chain in Canada, and I worked at more uh, than one okay. location. So yeah, I thought you were going to say Hong Kong. I would have guessed steak, no, steak no. expert. No, no, no. Okay, but do you have you ever performed the aristocrats on stage? You seem to know it pretty well. The the joke for the people at home that are listening. Uh, yeah, no, it's if you've ever if you haven't seen the documentary, check it out. But uh, I saw it. It's, it's great. Uh, yeah, Gilbert Gottfried I, probably the best in my mind. I like Gilbert. Yeah, I think uh, Bob Saget had a pretty crazy one. Saget's good, yes. but uh, definitely the dirty joke to end all dirty jokes. But no, I I'm not uh, <laughs> not much of a dirty joke guy. 
They should have uh, Takeout Comedy should do like an aristocrat's night. Every every comic just comes up, tells their version. No. Yeah, <laughs> but they not. have to involve like Chinese foods and things like that. Uh, yeah, it could be interesting. Yeah. All right, so two out of five. Good job. <laughs> I not, did not the I lowest didn't score historically ever. fail the quiz. <laughs> no, you you didn't. So good job. Uh, so let's finish the show up with uh, plugs. Check out Sean hosting an upcoming open mic event at Fill in the Blank on Friday, March 8th. Uh, to find out more about that on uh, comedy.hk. I better write these things down. Yeah. He also has a show at Rula Bula on Wednesday, March 6th, and shows at Takeout Comedy throughout March. Check out takeoutcomedy.com for dates and times. Yeah, that Rula Bula show is going to be crazy. It's got like a crazy good lineup. Uh, Vivek Mabubani's on it, uh, Ryan Hynek. And uh, there's this great comic uh, named Turner, Turner Sparks, who's coming in from Shanghai. Okay. And it's, uh, it's free. So, and it's on Long Kwai Fong, right at uh, Rula Bula. Wow, so. free all-star lineup. But those guys, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm humbled to be on stage with those guys. They're really, really cool. So Six, check, drinks, yeah. six drink minimum. Yeah, what if you you're me. But if you're <laughs> anyone else, probably keep it to one or two. It's a Wednesday. Uh, all right. Um, let me see here. There's a Liars League HK event on March 25th at 8 p.m. called Fairy Tales and Nightmares. So check that out. That's news to me. <laughs> Read HK Magazine. Find the website at hk.asia-city.com. And uh, is there anything else going on that we should mention? Uh, no, just uh, if you're listening to this, it, clearly you must have an interest in arts in Hong Kong, but uh, whether you find out about it on something, a site I'm affiliated with or, or, or not, uh, keep coming out to events and checking stuff out. Support There's some the cool people doing some cool stuff in town. Mo's deaf. Uh, do you have a Twitter? I don't. Yeah, I noticed that. It's dangerous. I, ha I, I think I have to get one, though. I think I've been like bullied yeah how how, how would uh people if they wanted to hire you out for a corporate gig or something is there any way to get a hold of you or? i don't know it's like you know <laughs> before like two or three years ago wouldn't they have just phoned me or like like human beings emailed me yeah. or something like well, that well here uh, i'll give a tip uh if you want to get in contact with sean come see him do some stand-up damn it and then uh yeah and then come up and tell me what you think of me that's that's you that's usually the the th way it goes give him some tips on how he can improve his act yeah that's always much appreciated yeah, definitely. tell me what you what you disliked most that seems to be what most people do <laughs> at comedy shows <laughs> All right. And then as far as uh, what's up Hong Kong, is there an event coming up you'd like us to mention on the show? Please let me know. Any kind of feedback that you want to give us would be great. Um, let me see. If you're new to podcasts, check out the website. We got some a couple podcasts on there. Hopefully some more to come soon. Um, please leave a rating and review for us on iTunes and uh, Stitcher. Subscribe to us on there if you use those. And uh, check out Dear HK, the other podcast on the network. Uh, they have new episodes every Wednesday. So if you're listening on Tuesday, the first day this comes out, check it out tomorrow. Contact me at TravyJ at SpeakHK.com. That's T-R-A-V-V-Y-J. Uh, tweet at SpeakHK on Twitter. Facebook.com slash Speak.HK to find us there. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So do you have any final words, uh, words for the listeners there, Sean? Yeah, I just want to say thanks, man. This is awesome. And, and, and Travis, like... I'm I'm a fan of the show, and I hope that anybody Great. listening keeps listening, and uh, and you're doing a good thing here promoting arts in uh, in Hong Kong. So, thanks. Uh, it was Appreciate an absolute it. honor and pleasure, and uh, and I'm sure that was it was uninteresting for most to hear anything I had to say, but I'm I'm happy uh, I was involved it was a in fun it. One. it. I, I can was already humbled, tell. Man. It was awesome. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for those kind words, Sean. And uh, for Sean A. Bear, this is Travis Jones signing off. That's what's up.